Okay, so boom, you want to start a podcast. The very first thing you need to do is go to anchor.fm and download the Anchor app. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place for free 99. You can record from a computer or you can record directly from your phone. And it sounds amazing recording from your phone. Anchor is equipped with creation tools that allow you to edit your audio and even add sound effects. They will distribute your podcast on many platforms such as like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Best of all, you can monetize just as I'm recording this here sponsorship. You can do the exact same thing and you can get a couple of coins every time someone listens to your podcast. So how cool is that? So go to anchor.fm or go to your favorite app store, download the Anchor app and get started today. I can't wait to hear your podcast. She do what she wanna do. She do what she wanna do. Ooh. She do what she wanna do. She do what she wanna do. Lord to the grave, tell you like it is to your face. She don't play. play. Every chick down for it all. I know that she a boss. No competition, no loss. From the Midwest to the A, all them got you tuning in. No delay. Ooh, get you right every time. Keep you laughing on a dime. Tell you truth, no lies. So you can live your best life. Cover all topics, no limits. Got some for your mama and your children. No holding back, no gimmicks. Coming on strong, get straight to business. Oh yeah. She do what she wanna do. Lit life, lit life. She do what she wanna do. Lit life, lit life. She do what she wanna do. Lit life, lit life. She do what she wanna do. Lit life, lit life, lit life. Lit life, lit life. Hey, it's your girl Autumn, and I welcome you back to the Lit Life Podcast, where I encourage you to live your life autonomously. I am <laughs> joined today, y'all. I be having like the dopest co-host, like seriously. Um, and I am joined today by one of my favorite. I don't even know. I I don't know how I came across his podcast, uh, but I'm glad that I did. Uh, I like a lot of the content, uh, the majority of the content, some of it, I, you know, he, he's a big hip hop head and I'm not like a huge hip hop head. So sometimes I just be listening like, oh, I, you know, I'll learn something basically. <laughs> but anyway, um, just like y'all are in the room. Welcome 12 Kyle from the 12 Kyle podcast in the building. What's good? What's good? Hey, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. I feel honored, man. Mom, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to call my mom until I made it. No, nah, seriously, it, it is it is indeed a pleasure, man. I mean, it, it's um, it goes without saying. I told you this when I had you on my podcast. Um, you're one of my favorites, Aww, so thank uh, you. it's uh, it's uh, both an honor and a pleasure to be here, and I'm ready to you know chop it up and have a good time. All right, well, I am glad you are here, and yes, guys, I was on um, I was on the Twelve Kyle podcast. Uh, I think that was last week. Um. Mm-hmm. And I I need you all to take a listen to that episode because, and I'll put it in the show notes as well, because I myself have listened to it about six or seven times. And it was a review of the um, album Forever My Lady by Jodeci. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I was uh, tweeting about it just, what was this, yesterday, I think. And somebody was like, "Uh, you might not want, you know, the the last few songs on there are whack. But I'm like, you know what, I'm not even about to argue with you because... I'm not doing that. Yeah, they don't understand. No, it, it's not a whack track on there. There's not one. So, anyways, we're you know we'll go down the whole rabbit hole talking about that again. So, I'm I know, right? Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so we're gonna get right into it. But first, and I forgot to tell you that I was gonna play my little uh my little shut the fuck up clip. So hold hold on one second, I'm gonna play it. All right. I don't forgot which button it is. We gonna try this one. All right, real. Nope, that ain't it. All right. So, 
as y'all know, I have this award and it's called the Shut the Fuck Up Award. And it's basically an award that you're going to give someone or a group of people or whatever uh, because you you know they've said something stupid or they're moving in a stupid way and you really just want to tell them to sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up so I always let the guests go first so go ahead if you have one uh yeah of course uh oh my shut the fuck up award I mean again I listen to this podcast each week and I love this award (laughs) and really (laughs) this person can get the shut, shut the fuck up award every single week. Um, this man <laughs> actually got in front of a podium in front of hot microphones <laughs> and said, now at the time of this recording, we're currently under a pandemic. Yes. Uh, the coronavirus is spreading and, you know, we must be diligent. You yes. know, it's just not time for panic. But uh, we must be diligent as far as how we move about, you know, our, our daily lives. Absolutely. This man got in front of a microphone and cameras and said, it's not a big deal. You can get it and go to work. <laughs> with the hand motions, too. He was, you know, you know, he talks with his <laughs> hands. So, yeah. I'm just like, I, and I always say this, Autumn, I think many, 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 many years from now, when we have our great, great grandkids Mm-hmm. We're going to have to explain to them how this happened, <sighs> how this man got to be the leader of the free world. I don't even say his name. Like I have his how? name blocked on Twitter. I don't talk about him. I don't watch him on TV. But I mean, for somebody to say that you could go to work, there are people that are losing their jobs currently. Yep. Losing money, millions of dollars. And he had the nerve to say that. I mean, just. You might as well put a teenager up there, man. I mean, so yeah, he he gets he gets my shut the fuck up award. And and to be honest, Autumn, like I said, when I listen to your podcast each week, I give it to him. Yeah, he made he he's made it a couple of times. Oh, I know he's made it I a know. couple of times. I mean, so. but I, I'm I am <sighs> campaigning that he could get it every single week because every week that you put out a podcast, he says something to make make me say, man, shut the fuck up. Yep. Yep. And can I just add to that? Just just adding to that and speaking on um, the whole coronavirus thing. (laughs) I saw I saw a tweet earlier (laughs) Uh and it was like a news special or whatever. And the news people were at a school. Did you see this tweet? The news people were at a school at you know us. Oh, not the lady. You know us black uh, folks, man. (laughs) Was it the one with the video with the lady talking about her kid and all of that stuff? Yeah, and and they oh had like God. all the parents were on there like yeah. spraying them down. Come on, y'all! Spraying lights all in their face. Come on, y'all! <laughs> Did you see the guy with the bags? Yes. <laughs> like y'all, I'm gonna need. I I really come on, y'all. Do you do y'all think that? blinding your child with a, a bleach solution to their face is is what's gonna kill the virus right and and not also blind them like th- they were literally spraying their kids in the face with stuff mm-hmm. like so yeah anyway it was funny at first like <laughs> Because I'm like, yeah, really? How are but you, you know doing that? Was, at first, it was the audio of her talking. And, yes. then, and then the more and more they started showing videos, I was like, because at first, when I first saw it, I thought it was a prank. Oh, me too. And I was like, this can't be real. And then when I saw, saw the guy with the bags, I'm like, man, come on, bro. Man, it was so terrible. Like, I just could. Like, why? But it's why? funny. Yeah, it was funny. It was funny. So, um, but yeah, so that's me adding to that. But um, I actually have like a little di- kind of a different uh, shut the fuck up award. And and, okay. and again, it came from from Twitter because, you know, that's where all my content comes from. <laughs> um, there was a tweet that somebody, uh, s- that I guess they tweeted out and, and said something like, you know, I really wish that random men wouldn't always tell me to smile and then there was a reply that said nobody does that and so the young lady tweeted and said retweet this if a random man has ever told you to smile and it got so many retweets like thousands and thousands of retweets because people don't realize that 
a lot of people do this. So my Shut the Fuck Up Award goes to the people who always are telling me to just to smile. Like, <laughs> and, and here's the thing, like, I'm not an angry person. I'm not an unhappy person. I mean, I may, I, I might have a resting bitch face. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. But just because I'm not smiling does not mean that I'm unhappy or that, you know, I'm angry at something or that I don't want to be, by. It, it doesn't mean that. It just means that it just means that I'm not smiling. <laughs> like, are you supposed to walk around with like, should I paint on like a clown mouth? Cause you know, the clown mouths look like they're always smiling. Like, should I do that? I don't understand. Am I supposed to, you know, just walk into the store, you know, into the grocery store and smile that I'm about to spend a hundred dollars on six items. Like, I don't understand why, they have to continue to always do that. So I felt that girl on that. And like I said, it had thousands and thousands of, um, of retweets because it happens all the time. So y'all got st- just stop doing that. Just stop. Just, just to let it go. Don't, don't tell. Like I'd be like, what, well, I'm smiling at what, what am I smiling at? <laughs> Did I miss well, maybe, the joke? Maybe just, maybe you have a nice smile and they want to see you smiling. But how maybe. do they, how do they know if they ain't never seen me smile? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. It's a pickup line. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Okay. Well, see, Gotta see, be. that's why. I, that's why you need. I needed to be on because maybe that's what it is. So, right. For but some, anyway. I'll, I'll say for some. Yeah. So, anyways, um, <laughs> excuse me. I brought uh, I brought Kyle on to the Lit Life podcast uh, because, again, like I said, I really love his podcast, and we really vibe when it comes to this you know old school r&b and i've listened to several of his podcasts and like i said i was on the one about jodeci and i had been like you have really encouraged me to do one of the things that i really wanted to do with this podcast which was review music Mm -hmm. now i can't say that i'm gonna review like newer stuff because I, I again I tried the other day I think I tagged you in something I tried the other day to listen to like somebody and I was just like this ain't it, <laughs> it, ain't the same. it like I don't even have anything to review you, you know what I'm saying like I can't even get on and be like oh well this song but I because I, I just feel like I can't relate and I'm gonna keep really trying right I'm gonna keep trying but it's not working out so anyways we're going back to um old school you know late 80s you know and 90s music we also need to look at some 2000s too because of course there were some hits there too but the album that we are going to review today y'all i know y'all probably forgot about it but i have not it is in effect mode by i'll be sure Woo. I it's an it's nine tracks and um came out in 1988 so late 80s I myself 1988. was 1988 yeah 1988 yep 88 right and me myself I was nine years old <laughs> okay way to make me feel old <laughs> <laughs> I was nine years old. Um, I, I remember this year particularly because my sister uh, is nine years older than me and she was graduating from high school. Mm. Well, that's one reason why I really remember um, 1988. But d- during 1988, like during the time, like I kind of want to just set the mood of, of the, other, you know, some other albums that might, that were out at that time in 1988. Um, let me know what you remember, because I'm sure you remember all of these. But oh, of course. Uh, you know, you I had to say <laughs> Mercedes Boy by Pebbles. Oh, of course, I had the uh, Maxi single. <laughs> <laughs> Why was that such a jam? That just that that single itself was such a jam. But um, and then, do you remember the Boys? Yeah. Okay, so their album came out with "Dial My Heart" on there, which mm-hmm. was "Dial My Heart." Right? Yes, which was a jam. Now I'm not gonna lie; I can't really remember nothing else that was on that 
on that tape, but they, I think they had like one other song that was, that was really tight, but, um, but they were good. I mean, you know, they, we weren't, we weren't that much older than them. So there was a, there was an appeal there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there was. And they had on them big old, um, suit yes, yes. <laughs> them and, uh, who else was that? So for real that had on mm-hmm. them. Just, I big mean, they clothes. were like, they had to be like four sizes bigger right. and they were suits though. Like, you know, like business suits. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, just cool and Levert. Yes. Yes. Love that album. Um, any heartbreak. We talked a little bit about any heartbreak on, on your uh, podcast, but yep, that's the year that that one came out. Mm-hmm. Um, don't be cruel. Bobby Brown, the Kang. Oh my gosh. The real, the real Kang. Kang of R and B. Yep. Yep, that came out. And then um, one of the reviews that you did that actually, like, where I was like, okay, I got to have him on my podcast was Guy. Yes, yes, Guy's debut album. (sighs) So timeless. (laughs) But all right, so timeless. So freaking timeless. Like, so that's kind of the climate we were in. So what do you remember about 1988? Um, It's funny that you asked me that, Autumn. I think... uh, in 1988, I have long made the case that that is one of the greatest years for music. Personally, I think it's the greatest year for hip hop as far as albums are concerned. But we're talking R&B. But I mean, it's just like you said, any heartbreak came out that year. And, you know, that was big because that was their first full length album, you know, without uh Bobby. Bobby, yeah. And there was, you know, Johnny was debuting at that particular time. Johnny Gill. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy album, you know, trendsetter. You know, it was incredible. Um But is that but that but the the any heartbreak, that's the one that had um boys to men on there, right? Yes. Oh, yes. God, yeah, yes. Johnny killed it. Oh <laughs> God, yes. <laughs> um, you know, like you said, obviously this album that we're gonna talk about, but um you know, though it was, it was really, oh, uh, Sade, Stronger oh, yep. Than Pride. Yep, yep, um, yep. You know, Vanessa, what's Vanessa? Vanessa Williams, she had the right stuff. That was another good album. Um, Prince had Love Sexy that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was, there, it was some smokers when it came to R&B. So it was just, I guess what we're trying to do is trying to really kind of paint the picture that competition was stiff. It was. In R- when it came to R&B. And, um, you know, for my hip hop heads out there, I just just to give you a taste. I know we're not talking hip hop, but I just to give you a taste of some of the albums mm-hmm. that came out in 1988, uh, straight out of Compton from NWA. Um, Banger. It takes a nation of millions to hold us back by Public Enemy. Mm-hmm. Um, EPMD's debut album, Strictly Business. The Great Adventures of Slick Rick mm-hmm. <laughs> by Slick Rick. Uh, just to name a few. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, Follow the Leader by Eric B. and Rakim. Uh, so it was it was a great time in music. And I think one of the things that you'll find just from listening to this podcast, what me and Autumn are about to talk about, is that we we hold it in such reverence because music sounded so much different back then. It did. And there was, um, you know, there were concepts. Uh, and then also the music was, you know, it was presented in a way that you had to listen to it all the way through. So the quality and the content was much better. You know, that again, you got to remember this is 1988. So there's pre internet. There's yep. no, you know, <laughs> you can't go on your phone and just download it. You had to physically get in your car or, or have your mom take you to the record store, the place where they sold records. The record shop. Yep. <laughs> and you had to actually either buy it on vinyl or you had to buy tape. You know, there wasn't even CDs out at this particular time. Mm-hmm. So keep in mind, when we sat down to listen to this music, you had to listen to it all the way through. You weren't going back and forth, hitting the fast forward or rewind button pretty much. You had but to. Um, it was it was some great music. And I wanted to kind of just lay out some of those albums just to let you know how the level of competition was. Because honestly, in 88, you couldn't come whack. You just couldn't. Nope. Nope. And and it, I mean, this, the hardcover sales you know what I'm saying like I said there wasn't like you said there wasn't any internet so we're not talking streams Mm -hmm. we're not talking streams here we're talking we went to the stove (laughs) we went to the mall we had a shop oh god what was the name of our record stuff record shop I can't even remember we had a record shop um in the hood 
that we went to like you had to go and buy it and then your favorite song from uh the album was never the first song it was just like so like like you said like rewinding doing the whole rewinding and fast forward you wasn't doing that no no you were sitting through the whole entire album and you know it just it it, it, it became a part of you and a part of your experiences and memories and everything like that. So even like you said, Autumn, you were nine. I think when this album came out, I was 15. Mm-hmm. So I can equate, you know, the dedication hour on the radio right. <laughs> to some of these songs. <laughs> we had a radio station, uh, 1520 WVOI. It was an AM okay. station. Like that only do are do they still have like am radio stations you know autumn i haven't listened to the radio by 15 Man, years it was so long ago. <laughs> but yeah but yeah the, you know these were the songs that were being uh requested on the uh the slow groove night or whatever <laughs> whatever quiet they was storm. calling it quiet storm yeah everybody had a quiet storm yes. everybody i don't care where you were you had a quiet storm in your town and you know what else on the radio they had people who were actually on the radio 24 hours like mm-hmm. there was a show going on it wasn't like just playing music and at night it was always somebody there talking like it's two o'clock in the morning and you got somebody on the radio talking right. so I don't think they do that no more either. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's, you know, 1988, that's where we were. Um, but I want to talk about, before I go into the actual album, I kind of mm-hmm. want to just give a little bit of background uh, about Albie Shore himself. Mm-hmm. The light skin king, right? <laughs> He was one of the original pretty motherfuckers. Right. Okay. Him and I'm going a little bit out of order because I had this on here, but him and Christopher Williams. Yes. Right. So, but okay. So I didn't watch the unsung. I know that they, that Christopher Williams just had an unsung. I but, haven't watched, it's on my DVR. I haven't watched it yet. Okay. But did you know anything about, um, something about either him being mistaken for Albie or Albie being mistaken for him and somebody was charged with rape or something? That I did not know. I know that, you know, they would be mistaken for for each other from time to time. And I guess you kind of had to chalk it up to the times because, again, we didn't have, you know, social media. We didn't have the Internet. So, you know, everything pretty much was word of mouth. So a lot of times there were rumors about certain things about certain people and Mm -hmm. there was never really anybody there to disprove it. So, You know, you kind of if somebody said somebody got arrested, then, you know, unless you read it in the paper the Mm -hmm. next day, Mm -hmm. you just had to kind of take it for his word unless, you know, you saw it in like a word up or write on magazine. Right. And it's funny because uh, I I went to a concert some years ago uh, in Detroit at Shane Park and both I'll be sure and Christopher Williams were there. Okay. And they had to make sure that they came on, you know, that they were both present on stage at the same time and say, all these years <laughs> later, there are people who think that we are the same person. Wow. And and th- and now they really don't look alike at no. all. At no, all. No. So and I'm trying to I'm questioning if they really did look alike back then or if it was just a case of all light skinned niggas look the same. Yeah, I don't well, know. Well that's pretty much what it was. <laughs> I mean, think about it. At that particular time, you're talking about nineteen eighty eight. So it was like oh the late eighties, if you will, because I think Chris Williams came out after him. So, you know, it, it, the land, when you think about the landscape of music, what a whole bunch of light skinned dudes. I mean, right, you had, you right. Know, you had Howard Hewitt from Shalimar, and like <laughs> you had the bar, the barge, the bar, yeah, yeah. Oh, can't forget about the DeBarge boys. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, light skin really wasn't popping back. I mean, well, it was popping, but it wasn't really that prevalent as far as our, you know, age group, if you will. Yeah, it it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, but but those two. You know, they stood out for, for mm-hmm. us. And, okay, I was nine. I understand. I was nine. But my sister was 18. So mm-hmm. I'm, like, walking in her shadow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, like, the thing she like, I like. Like, she, but you know what? She was in love with the barge, and I wasn't in love with the barge. <laughs> like, no, like, had the barge posters. every girl love El DeBarge. I wasn't. Really? I okay. I, like, he didn't, he never even grew on me like that. Okay, okay. But Al... Mm. absolutely absolutely so um he um like we're saying he's r&b singer songwriter producer uh from boston massachusetts and he got his start 
singing back up, right? He sang back up for um, Heavy D and the Boys yep. uh, debut, Living Large. So that's that's lit. Like, Heavy D with light skin? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's the first place where I heard him. Uh, I didn't know who he was, but um, I, I had the Heavy D album. Uh, well, I had the tape, I should say, Living Large. Mm-hmm. Um, Heavy D was one of my favorite rappers at the time. And uh, that came out in 87, if I'm not mistaken. And mm-hmm. um, he was on, what was the track? Uh, Money on her Mount Vernon and another track. And um, I remember seeing the video for Money on her Mount Vernon. And he was actually, because he sang the hook on Money on her Mount Vernon, which is where Heavy D is from. Mm-hmm. And he was in the video. And we later learned that that was Al B. Shore. So, yeah, yeah, that's the first time. That was my first introduction to Al B. Shore. I love fine. I love um, knowing like what the what, you know like where they started at, mm-hmm. as opposed to where they you know where they are now. But that's the, yeah, that's awesome. So that's where he kind of started um, singing background vocals, and I think um, he did. Uh, you know when he he won that he won like an award yep, or something award. yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh that the Quincy Jones put out which is how he ended up on um Secret Garden which was. Okay, 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 okay. Sidebar. Go ahead. Who had the best verse on Secret Guard? Oh, that's hard. I know, right? <laughs> but see, I know you know R and B, so everybody can't answer that question. Uh, I. I'm. A, yeah, I'm a, I'll tell you mine while you're pondering yours. It's tough because all of them killed it, but Barry White. I was kind of leaning towards Barry too. I, I think it was more. I don't even know if it was like the verse or if it was just his. It's his voice. Yes. Oh, the Walrus killed it. He killed it. I mean, like there was no. Yeah, it, it was. It, I can understand why a woman would throw her panties on the stage. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, verse. yeah. I, yeah, I think he. I think. I think that's mine too. Okay, I, think I, I didn't mean too. to sidetrack you, but I no, just, you're good. No, you're good. You, yeah, you I brought it up. I had to ask. Yeah, yeah, but because that was that was a huge yes. Hit. I'm like Secret Garden though. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it was. It was. It was such a good. It was such a good song. So, um. But yeah, so he did that, uh, and 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 I think was kind of was kind of funny um, in talking about Al B. Sure, like okay, he had four albums that he put out that was you know his solo pro- solo albums mm-hmm. or whatever. So he had the In Effect Mode, he had Private Times and the whole nine, Sexy Verses and Honey I'm Home. Like. Do you remember the other three? Like, do you remember the the last three that I just? <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's it's funny that you asked me that, Autumn, because in doing you know some background research for the show, I remember him having those albums, but I don't remember listening to them. I really don't. <laughs> so so Private Times came out in nineteen ninety. I did not know. I knew it came out. I didn't know it came out in 90. Yep. 1990. And then, and Sexy Versus came out in 92. Yeah, I clearly wow. I, I knew I didn't hear it in 92. <laughs> so listen, 90 and the, those two, I, I don't, rem, I don't even remember them. Like, to be yeah. honest. And I, it's, it sucks to say that. I'm not trying to like throw no shade in that, but it really sucks to say that. Cause I don't even remember. Like, I feel like I'm going to have to go and try to listen to them. And I say try because I'm not sure how it's going to go. Right. Now, Honey, I'm Home, that came out in 2009. I remember Honey, I'm Home coming out, but I didn't hear it until maybe maybe 2011. Okay. Like it was it was some couple of years later when I heard it. And the reason it was brought to my attention, um a good friend of mine sent me uh Lady in My Life. So he remade Mm. Lady in My Life. Wow. Originally sang by Michael Jackson. Of course. And it was lit. Wow. I have to check that out. Yes. It was, I mean, and I'm not like, I'm not big on remakes. 
<laughs> I'm right. not big on remakes. But this one, like, it, when he sent it to me, his name is Steven. I don't know if he listens, but hey, Steven, if you listen. When, when he sent it to me, I'm like, I'm not listening to this. Mm-hmm. He's like, listen, you have to listen to it. He said, just listen to it one time. I guarantee it won't be the last time. And I listened to it, and I said, this what we on, Al? <laughs> This what we got wow. like you you really going to sing this like you sang this like you're going to do this. So, yeah, it it's amazing. So you have to hear it now. The rest of the album, I wasn't really I wasn't really feeling it. But the lady in my life was good. So you have to y'all anybody listening, y'all have to to hear that. Um, But, yeah, I didn't re- really too much remember any the rest of his solo projects now. But his songwriting, like his songwriting credits go a long way, right? Mm -hmm. He's written some of our favorites. We've already talked about Forever My Lady. Who who can write Forever My Lady? Right. Incredible. I mean, we we already talked about it, but, you know, so you're having my baby. Yes, I am. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) So so he wrote that for... um, um, his um, what, what they were married right at the time, right? Uh, they were married. Uh, no, they weren't. They, they were? were dating. Yeah, I don't. Th- I uh, God bless the soul, Kim Porter. Kim I don't Porter think is. they ever married. Oh, I think they were dating at the time, and she had, you know, she got pregnant or whatever like that, and then they tried to. I think they lived together for a while, tried to make it work, and didn't, and they still remain cool. And I think shortly after that, she. You know, started well. I don't want to say shortly, but years after that, she started dating Puff. Yeah, and you know, um, for a while, I don't know if it's, I don't know how many kids he has, but I know I, I had uh, saw something where he was like one of his kids. He just he didn't really have too too much um, too much of a relationship with, but um, little Al was on the tour with them when they came to Detroit. Look just okay. like him, sound just like him in person. Anyway, I I haven't really heard any music that he's put out, but yeah, he did good. And and I bring him up because in talking about songwriting credits, he um and I'm talking about his son. He sang songs by Tevin Campbell. Okay, because you know I'll be sure wrote uh goodbye, which is oh my god, one yes, of my favorite. <laughs> He wrote Goodbye by Tevin Campbell. He wrote Just Ask Me Too, which was on, what, that was on the soundtrack. It was on somebody's mm-hmm. soundtrack. That was on the, New uh, Jack, not New Jack uh, City, uh, um, 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 Boys in the Hood. Yes, there you go. Boys in the Hood soundtrack, which was a jam. Still jams to this day. Still jams. But my most favorite song by Tevin Campbell that I'll be sure wrote, it's my favorite song by Tevin Campbell, period, but Alone with you. Mm. <laughs> That's the joy. But I'm trying to figure out, like, because, you know, Tevin was young, too. Tevin was young when he sang this. So I'm like. Oh, of course, he was really, he was a teenage, I want to say. Yeah, but it's like, again, it's one of those songs that me today, 40 years old, can listen to this song and be like, yes, I, I need all of this. Whatever it is he's talking about, I need it. Um like today so yeah he so his son came out and sang along with you I want to say he sang goodbye too but um dope writing credits I mean just those few songs by itself he wrote um this is your day by 112 too you remember that song it was off their Mm -hmm. first I think it was off their first cd so yeah um and I couldn't I was looking like those are kind of the ones that I kind of knew off the top of my head but I I was kind of looking I felt like I may have not been looking in the right place because I feel like he's written a lot more. Yeah, he he is a very good song. I mean, in, an incredible songwriter. And I think really when you list out those albums that he made, I think, you know, when people wonder like, well, what hit what had he been doing, you know, in between albums? He's writing a lot of songs. He did a lot of ghostwriting, too. So mm-hmm. he, he stayed busy. Yeah, he stayed very busy and really wasn't in the public eye for for some years. But, uh, you know, that's how he made his money, too. Yeah. And when I when I found out, because I think 
I don't think I knew that he wrote Alone With You and Goodbye until I saw him in concert that day. And um, when I uh, when I thought about it, I was like, okay, that ma- it makes sense. Like, it sounds like I'll be sure. It so- you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, mm-hmm. it, it sounded like somebody that was older. <laughs> that wrote, even though he put a line in there about, like, couldn't wait to get home from school or something like that. It still seemed like it was somebody that was not a teenager um, that wrote this song. So even with goodbye, like you could tell that it was, there was some sort of adult involved in writing this. So, Oh, no question. So, but anyway, yeah, he has some vocal uh, credits too. You know, like we already said, secret garden, um, the lover and you, big daddy Kane. Uh, he sang on, you know, um, like we said, Heavy D backup. He sang back uh, a backup vocal on something from Usher to Al Green. So I mean, he's a big deal, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> like still, no I, I mean, people discredit him though. Like he ain't what he is. Like Al is serious. And you know, I, I think why I think why P, some people discredited him because of the success of this first album and then the second and third and fourth albums didn't necessarily have the same success, but I think he was in a different place, but I don't think that that negates what he brings to the table. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Um, so yeah, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a small break and then we're going to come back and get into the actual album itself. Cool with you? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. I'm working on some stuff for the eighth wonder of the world, which we know who that is, Tevin Campbell. Mm-hmm. And I'm um, working on some stuff for Shaka Khan. Wow. Um, a new group coming out, Jodeci. Uh, no joke. They're from down south. they you know, from the Carolinas. And uh, actually, they're singing back up on our Father MC's. Uh, Father oh, really? MC's, you know, treat them like they want to be treated. Yeah. And uh, they come in a slam. You know, they, ain't, they ain't mad at nobody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jodeci? Jodeci, that's the name. It's Jojo, Devante, KC, and Dalvin. That's oh, the I combination see. of their names and okay. stuff like that. Nah, they bad. All right, we are back, and we are talking about Al B. Shore's uh, album, In Effect Mode. I have my podcast friend here, 12 Kyle of the 12 Kyle Podcast. In the building. So we are going to jump right into it. Um, Again, just to recap a little bit, this album came, was released in 1988. It was May 3rd, 1988 on Uptown Records. Um, And the majority of the songs were written uh, and composed by I'll Be Sure and Kyle West, um, except for a couple of them. So there, you know, there were a few that had, you know, an extra person here and there, but for the majority of the album which it was nine songs long uh al and kyle west wrote them so first track night and day wait first (laughs) let me go back just want to let y'all know it went triple platinum better believe it yeah yeah it went triple platinum so i mean again and and just going platinum go Hell, going gold was kind of hard. That that was extreme. Again, this is the non-internet era. It yep. was extremely difficult to do. And this is someone who's R&B and his, this is his debut album. It's unheard of. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it was, it, it, it was lit. But first track, Night and Day. How you feel about Night and Day? First of all, I got to shout out Kyle West, who, you know, bears the same name as me. Facts. Uh, and uh, what was interesting was I remember, uh, it's crazy back then, introducing myself to a girl. And she said, I said, my name is Kyle. She was like, oh, like Kyle West? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I guess. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, there were no other black people named Kyle. Right. So, uh, and just for your listeners, I am black. Um, <laughs> in case you haven't figured it out by now. Blackity, black, black, black. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Um But yeah, this song, oh my gosh, this was, this song was everything. And I think one of the things that always stood out to me about this song was that how much airplay it got, even on the radio. You know how like when we were coming up, you would hear a song like a gazillion times on the radio and you get tired of it. Mm -hmm. Like we never got tired of this song. I'll be sure it was just, this was the joint. For years. 
Exactly. And then once the video dropped, it was a wrap. He became, you know, and I, I think he's talked about it like on Unsung and, you know, some of these other documentaries and stuff like that. He, he became a sex symbol, you know, when this album came out. And this was one of the songs that kind of propelled him to that. Mm-hmm. And um, but this song, man, was incredible. I just it was um if you've listened to my podcast, I've talked in on previous podcasts about, you know, getting making a slow, dr- slow jam, get the draws tape. Mm-hmm. Uh, night and day has to be on your slow jams. Get the draws tape. H- had to be. Had to be. <laughs> and and uh, the video like yes. the video with this man and his body roll like that was his uh <laughs> All of his Not videos, all of his videos had that. I mean, like he had the meanest body roll. Like I don't even his body roll was comparable to like Bobby Brown body roll. Like you know, this is back when men in videos really going to body rolls on them. Man, this is when the dudes <laughs> were doing body rolls, and the but the body rolls were sexy, like to us. You know, they were sweet. We was like, oh, you know. I feel like I got the body rolls from a man. Like I can't even remember any ladies right now that were body rolling harder than Albie Shore and Bobby Brown. I can't think of any. Um, maybe Aaron Hall. Maybe. I'm talking about women, though. Are there oh, any women? women? Uh, no, no, nobody. The, <laughs> the dudes have body rolls on lock. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, Vanity Six, but that was way before, right? Like, maybe did they do a body roll in Nasty Girl? I, they had to, because I do a body roll just thinking about the song. But, yeah, like, the video was, was, it didn't really didn't matter what he was saying in the song sometimes. Like, and he had the, he had, um, he, he didn't have, he doesn't have a, like a deep voice either. It's, it's very like soft. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't sing as hard to me. He didn't sing as hard as like a KC. Right. You know what I'm saying? He was just very, not even as hard as uh Christopher Williams. Cause Christopher Williams, like, you know, he's, he sang, sang, but Al made it happen. Like I'm not, I'm not even going to sit up here and say that he was like, <laughs> the best singer of all time but he could sing you know <laughs> he could definitely sing which oh, is no why doubt, no doubt he, he could do more he was more than just a a, a handsome face for the ladies so Al, Al really could write songs and he could sing songs and that's a very lost art and and, and he could dance mm-hmm. like he loved to dance I think I was watching I don't know if that was his own song I don't know who what I was watching but he really loved to dance as well so that's night and day and, and you know what I'm gonna just while we're here, I'm going to just skip to number nine because okay. we, you know, I mean, it's the same song. Right. But it's in French. So <laughs> who I want to know. I need names. I need names, dates. I need al- album release dates, something. I need to know who had a song, a whole French song in French on their albums that people actually listen to? Uh, nobody. Okay. <laughs> because nobody even had the French song in right. the first place. <laughs> but did you listen to it? Like, I listened to it. I did, I want to say the first, maybe couple of times after I bought the tape. After that, I stopped. Because I was like, man, I don't know what he's saying. I I, I remember thinking it was in Spanish the first time. Because I think there's a Spanish version <laughs> Is too. there? Yeah, there's a Spanish version, there's a French version. And so I was like, you know, I don't know any of these languages. So it's that I'm like, I'm not doing all that. So, so, but, uh, but it, it was still, I think it was a dope move because again, nobody else had done it. And it was just really playing into this, you know, sex symbol, ladies man type yep. thing, because it was a chance. I mean, think about it. You're a woman. And this guy is singing to you in a different language and the shit sound dope. <laughs> dope. And the only, like you said, you couldn't, you didn't know what he was saying, but the only way that you knew what he was saying is because you knew the words from the original version. You know what I mean? You knew the English version. Mm-hmm. So you knew what he was saying, but I mean, I, I actually, I, I never really skipped it. I mean, it was at the end anyway, but right. It was at the end. Right. Yeah. But so, that's that on that for those two. Now, 
I kind of want to skip number two, but I'm going to just go ahead and, and go with it. Ooh, this love is so. Yes. Hands down, my favorite on the entire album. This is my, this is one, uh, this is a song that has made it to my repeat worthy list. Mm. Because Al is talking that talk. Yes. All the way through. And remember when we talked about on your podcast, how at the end of a song, you didn't know it was the end. Until, the only way you knew it was the end is because it was fading out. Right. Because right. they continued to sing. And with this song, he hits that high note at the end. I ain't going to do yes. it. I ain't going to. I ain't even gonna, I really want but to. But you do it I'm in the shower, to. though. Oh, I, real loud. <laughs> I was doing it earlier. I know oh, my neighbor funny. is like, why, why she got that music so loud? Like, I was in here jamming. That last, I mean, it takes you, it makes you not, it, it makes you feel like the song should not ever end. Mm, facts. That's how I felt about it. How did you feel about I love this song. This song was another song that made it to my uh, slow jams, get the draw state. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my memories about this song was that, and again, I'm going to date myself because like I said, I was 15 when this album came out. I do remember this was like on the local radio station, like the most requested song, like for a couple of weeks, which was big back then. Mm hmm. And so, like, everybody wanted to hear it. So girls were calling up. They were dedicating this to their boyfriends and all kind of stuff like that. And you kind of waited around to see if your name was going to get shouted out, that type of stuff. Uh, it was just, it was big. And it was it was one of those songs that, again, over a period of time, like, you just never got tired of hearing it. Right. And, you know, Al is, uh, like you said, he just, he, he kills it. And then at the end of the song, it's just going. It's, it's going. And you going. hear it fading, but you really don't want the song to end. Um, one of my favorites on the, I mean, there, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this. I, there's not a song on here that I dislike on the album, but this song got major airplay and, um, got major play on my tapes. Yep. Yep. And he starts out like, this, again, it's taking the time to show my love for you. Mm. Do you love me too, girl? What do you, <laughs> do you even have to ask me that question? <laughs> is that a real question then he says don't tell me let it show yeah. get the draws that's it yeah. <laughs> i mean and that's and that's that's what i when i say that music was different those first few bars always hit hard mm, you should. didn't you didn't have to li you didn't have to be halfway through the song to start feeling it. You didn't have to, it didn't have to be the, um, the musical arrangement of it. You know what I'm saying? It didn't have to be the actual music behind it because the bars hit you so hard with these love songs. It's just, it was just amazing. That's, but that's definitely like my favorite song on the track. I mean, on the album. Um, number three, which was very, very popular. Killing Me Softly. Yes. So Killing Me Softly, I didn't know this uh, back then that two other people mm -hmm. had already, you know, sang it. Roberta Flack and then it was somebody before her. Mm -hmm. um, but he killed it. He absolutely killed it. He did. He did. He really did. I think um, I remember when I initially heard it, that was the talk that it was a Roberta Flack cover. Now, I do remember and, and I did at the time know who Roberta Flack was, but I really wasn't familiar with her version of the song. So I do remember, um, I think I asked my, either my uncle or my mom, one or the two about it, and we actually had the album and so I actually played it. I played her version and I played his version. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
she all right. Bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same I was way. Like, what do you mean she all right? I was like, you know, she she okay. She cool. But, you know, that is, you know, I was, in my mind, she wasn't fucking with LP. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you know, so no. that was just 15-year-old me. I didn't, I mean, what, 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 what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, um. This is actually my favorite ballad on the song. I mean, on the album. Mm-hmm. Um, he he uh, he killed it. He killed it. And it was another one that I think one thing people have to understand is it's difficult to do a cover, uh, especially one that's popular. Mm-hmm. And for her, one, to give him the blessing to do it. And then for two, for him to do it just as good. And, you know, some may say better than her than than the original. I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, he sang this. I mean, it's like you could feel. I couldn't really feel it with Roberta. I, no shade. No shade. <laughs> but no I did shade. the same thing when I found out that she, you know, sang it before he did. Now, nah, I'm not going to lie. I didn't go back to a couple of people that was before that. I didn't. But I went back to her and, and listened to hers. And I just, I wasn't, I just wasn't feeling it. And and even when the Fugees drop their version version i i felt a way but it grew on me Mm -hmm. like i actually really love that version as well not as much as albie's version but albie wins (laughs) yeah yeah i i didn't i mean but it was and just the little twist that they had on it and you know the whole one time you know it was just like all right they you know they put a little spin on it i like it and you know lauren and her voice and all of that. So, um, I mean, I think the Fuji it took a while for them to, for me to warm up to them in the first place. So, but yeah, they, they killed it, but Al really killed it. Like he did that. So number four, naturally mine. How did you feel about naturally mine? I love this joint. This was, um, this, this song I think is almost like the definition of like, if you, if, if we went into a, a, a time zone and you came back to 1988, that would be a song that you would place it. If you want to say, Hey, this is what a ballad sounds like in 1988. Mm-hmm. That was a ballad in 1988. I absolutely love this song. Um, I used to try to, <laughs> I used to try to sing it on the phone, but um, <laughs> you know, my voice wasn't that high. But uh, he you was back in the ladies, you know, <laughs> back in the day. But um, yes. But yeah, it was uh, th- that was the ultimate ballad right there, naturally mine. And I think it was uh, it's one of his. It's kind of hard for me to say it's a signature song, but it's it's one of those songs that like people really really relate to. I mean, like, everybody knows the hits, and this wasn't as big a hit as right. you know, some of the other ones that we mentioned, but this was a dope dope jam. Right. I, I still love it to this day. Yeah, it was and it, it it's it, to me it's like um it's it's a, it's like a signature for for him. I I think it's like a signature song for him. I mean, I couldn't imagine anybody else singing this song. I, no. I just couldn't like I. Th- it wouldn't make sense to me to I, like. I don't want anybody to remake it. I don't want you know. And I just couldn't imagine anybody else, especially at that time, um, singing this particular song. So I'm glad that you know when he and and Kyle West decided to write this song. I'm glad he kept it because it fits him very very well. Oh no doubt, I agree a thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. So um. <clears throat> Moving forward, uh, number five was Rescue Me. Mm -hmm. So that was the first uh, upbeat song that's on this this album. And it was a jam. And the video was dope. Yes. He was body rolling in that video, too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let me find out Artemis around here counting body rolls in the video. He was. I almost want to say he... um, I want to say he took off his shirt in that one, too. Like, he was such a, a huge sex I don't boy. remember that. I, listen, I'm talking to the ladies. Listen, right. y'all. I mean, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I just... I, I'm y'all sorry. go ahead and Google... Uh, <laughs> go to YouTube and yeah, look up Rescue YouTube. Right, and Rescue Me. And, it. I mean, it really... It was a jam. I can't remember. This wasn't... That wasn't... What was the... um? I can't remember what the first uh, single was. Was it Night and Day? It had to be Night and Day. 
But I think um, uh, it was either night and day or off on your own. One of the two. Which is the next song, number six. Right. Um, Wanna get off on your own, girl? I had to. Sorry. <laughs> Wanna get off on your own, it. girl, girl. Girl, girl, you know that was come on yeah, now. That, that was the, now that's my favorite up tempo joint on the album. Um, man, that uh, <laughs> okay. Before I give it his props, I got a clown for a second. Mm-hmm. Why did Al B. Albert Brown, if you're listening, because I know you listen to the podcast. Yeah, oh, you know he listen every week. Why did you channel your inner rapper? <laughs> oh, you clowning, like, clowning him. Um, Bootleg Slick Rick, <laughs> Al B. Uh, I mean, Al, <laughs> brother, you down with Heavy D at this point? You could have got the Bundiddly D to rap over this. Yes, it wasn't whack, but <laughs> don't do that shit again. <laughs> I'm telling you now, in 2020, don't do that shit again. You had Heavy D at your disposal. He really did. I ain't even think of that. He really, I really mean, did. But you know what, Autumn is is looking back on it now. It's actually cute. I can say it's cute, and I don't mean that in a you know sexual way. But it's he tried. You know, yeah, what I'm he saying? just. And, I was about to say he he gave it. A, he gave it. And a here's the thing try. that we also have to keep in mind. This was like we said. I have to look it up, but it was either the, the his first or second single. 1988 wasn't a time really when rap was getting a lot of play on air. Right. So if you go, so I, I kind of get it to some degree. If you go get a rapper and put that rapper on there, it might not get the airplay that you probably want to get. So, so I understand why he rapped on it as opposed to getting heavy D. Now, yeah, getting heavy D ain't the same as getting Ice Cube at this point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Correct. because NWA came out. But you know, it wasn't really that wasn't really a time where you saw a lot of. Um, in fact, there were very. In fact, at that, now I look back on it. At that particular time, you didn't have a rapper rapping over R and B tracks. That that would come, I want to say, right around late '89, early '90. Right. So we were probably about two years away from that. But yeah, he tried uh, with the little, like I said, slick Rick sounding rap. Mm-hmm. But um, it was cute. But again, dope ass song. I love it. Dope video. I mean. It, he yeah he he tried with the rap but the the whole song was really it, it came together well I guess it did it, it wasn't did. a fail and that was his second I just uh looked it up so it was night and day and okay. then um off on your own girl and then uh, rescue me okay so, so yeah if that's his second single no he can't put a rapper on there and he had um on this particular album five single five. Singles that went to Billboard. So it was Night and Day, Off on Your Own Girl, Rescue Me, um, If I'm Not Your Lover, and Killing Me Softly. So If I'm Not Your Lover is um, is the next one, number seven. Mm -hmm. Um, And you know what's weird about that, mm -hmm. Uh, about the songs? Okay, I think they officially released five singles, but I remember the going, going back to the radio station in my hometown, I want to say seven of the songs made it to radio and that was unheard of. Mm-hmm. So that just shows you how big this album, cause you don't, you know, I'm trying to put it in the proper context, particularly for those who either weren't around or, you know, maybe too young to remember, but you were lucky if you could get two or three singles to radio. I feel like it was, I feel like it was eight because I, I, I remember hearing, the French or Spanish version, whichever it was, of, of Nine Day on the radio mm-hmm. and okay. Nine Day, of course. And, uh, ooh, this love is so killing me softly. Yes. Uh, naturally mine. Did I hear it right naturally mine on the radio? Maybe not. Maybe that's the one I, I think the on only the one that I don't, re- and it's, and again, it's not to say that it wasn't. I don't, the only one that I don't remember hearing on our local radio station was just to taste the love. Same. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah. And it was, but that's still a dope song. Yeah, it was good. That's the next song that uh, we're talking about. Yeah, that it was, it was, um, it was, it was a, it was a nice song. Like I didn't this this particular album for me. I there were no skips for me. I can still, no. I can still to this day, I can still listen to it. Um, you know, from one to nine. I mean, you 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 skipping number nine, 
You already said it. Well, it just depends on my mood. But I mean, like when I listened to it, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't skipping it. I, I mean, it's it's the album, I think, is only like 38, 39 minutes long. So and that also speaks to the music landscape in 1988. You know, they ain't had time for no bullshit filler music. Right. You had to get to it. So. um so yeah, it, it 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 this is a phenomenal album front to back, top to bottom. You know, if you haven't listened to it or if you never heard it, uh after you finish listening to this podcast, you definitely need to listen to it cuz it is a dope ass album. It's one of those albums that hasn't aged. It really hasn't. It really hasn't. It really hasn't. And and it's again it I, and I think, you know, I try really hard to um to talk to like you know younger the younger crowd who 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 were not you know either able to listen and and understand in 90s or late 80s and 90s music or just wasn't born yet and I tried to to make them understand just like you were saying earlier like we put the tape in and we let it play that's it (laughs) <laughs> so, so I, I so I, you know maybe even and and you can tell me if if I'm right or wrong or if the, if this makes any sense maybe even if there was a song that we really wasn't fooling with like that it just kind of grew on us in the end mm-hmm. because we were just we're gonna listen to it like we're not skipping it <laughs> like oh, we're not no question. yeah so I, I I think you know that's that could be part of it too um but some people but we we sat we literally sat with the music. You had to. You had to. And 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 I think part of it's because the way the music was produced and manufactured and structured, you know, if like you've gone through the track listing already and so it's like all of these there's not a misplaced track. So there's really no need to skip a song because everything you know, is kind of layered and it makes sense for them to kind of run together the way that they do. And like you said, even if it was a track that you didn't particularly care for, you're like, oh, no, you know, okay. But you, nine times out of 10, you're going to sit through it. You're going to sit through it. Yeah. For no other reason to get to the next song. So it's like music was just, they were really just trying to make some banging ass hits, but they Mm -hmm. also wanted it to, to fit, you know, to the entire album. And I think this, you know, Kyle West and Al Be Sure, uh, and Teddy Riley and everybody who worked on this album did a great job of doing that. Mm-hmm. And it was, um, it was, it was, you know, we, we would sit through the song and eventually, like I said, if it wasn't one that we just like really, really loved, you know, we kind of liked it, but it wasn't like, you know, super hot. We still knew the words. It was just like listening to, you know, just like when a song would come on the radio 80,000 times and we learn a word, it just, it grew on us, which I guess that was a good thing back then. You know what I'm oh, saying? No like question. if it wasn't like a hit, because now again we have, you know, we don't have CDs no more. We had, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't live through all of this. We didn't live through eight tracks. No, we don't. Unfortunately, we don't. And everybody has, you know, yeah, <laughs> right, <man>. right. <laughs> we, I mean, we, we, we. I know about eight tracks. My mom. Listen, my mom had um, this one particular eight track, Al Green. Um. She loved Al Green. She was in love with Al Green. My cool ass hated Al Green because I was sick of listening to it. So that means your mom played it all the time. All the time. Just just, <laughs> just like we played it. Just like we played Jodeci. You know what I'm saying? Like she played right. that Al Green like to death. But yes. I So we lived through eight tracks. We lived mm. through vinyl. Mm. We lived through tape. Mm. We li- lived through CDs. I, you know what? I, I have a confession. What's up? I recently, in the last three or four months, bought a CD. Really? I'm going to tell you why. I guess the question is, where did you find it? Because <laughs> nobody sells them anymore. They do. You know, they have, they're still really? like record stores. So like in Little Five Points, I can't even think of the name of the. Uh, um, is it uh, Criminal Records? Criminal Records. That, yeah. And for, the, for, for those of you listening, that is a record store <laughs> right. right here in the city of Atlanta right, where right. Autumn and I live. It's called Criminal Records. Yep. So I went to Criminal Records because, yep, you guessed it. Raheem Devon was there. Oh. Should have known. 
was he signing autographs or yep. he just hanging out? Yep, he was signing autographs and went down um, there stalking all right. So I went on ahead and bought that C D. As if as if this man wow. ain't got enough of my money. Wow. I went on ahead and bought the C D. But anyways. <laughs> hey Rod, because I know you listen too. Yeah, of course he's listening. You um, got to get him on the podcast. I do, you know, I, you, did you see the tweet when I saw the tweet? <laughs> yeah, so I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do like the professional thing and send an email to like, go. his people, and I'm gonna put the tweet in there just so that y'all know that he said right. this, and then hopefully all I need is 15 minutes. That's, That's it. it. I I've already written out the questions that I'm gonna ask. You know what to say. I know what to say. That's you don't it. even need a script. I really don't. I really don't. Well, <laughs> you know what? Yes, I do. Because I, if I don't have a script. You better fan out. Right. If I don't have a script, I'm just going to be like, you know what? I know I've said this 27 times, but I love you and I love all of your music. Like, so, yeah, I had to go ahead and write it down. But anyway, yes, I we live through CDs. Um, and now we're in this digital era where you don't even have to purchase the whole album. Like you could really buy one song or if you already have a streaming service, which most of us do, you just put that on a playlist. Like people are not listening. I don't, I mean, I guess maybe people are listening to um, albums front to back, but a lot of times I just don't feel like that's what's happening. Mm. I don't, I don't know. They're like, not, they're not. Mm. And I think part of it is because of, you know, how music is consumed. It's, it's consumed just to, you know, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. And it's like, you know, there's no there's no emotional attachment to it. You know, just like how we're sounding over this album, there's some feelings, there's some emotional attachment. It's just now it's kind of like, let's just ride the wave. And then once we finish riding the wave, we'll figure something out. We'll, we'll pick up something else. It's almost like mm-hmm. that kid on Christmas morning that gets the toys. He's mm-hmm. got the toy that he wants. He picks up the toy, plays with it for a little while, puts it down. And then he goes about his business. Like the next day after you done spent all this money. Like mm. <laughs> that's what kids do. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and then too, you see the tweets. Um, you know, I see a lot of a lot of people tweet. Uh, they'll tweet like a song lyric or something like that, and they'll say, you know, I really felt that. You know, I felt when he said that. But you never really see anybody say, you know what, this whole album was dope. Like you don't, right? You just don't see that a lot. So, but anyways, so yeah, that is um. Our review, you got anything else to say about the album in particular or even just I'll be sure? It was again, it, it was uh, it was an incredible album. Um, it's one that I, th- I think, like I said earlier, I, I would implore anyone listening to pick it up because I think you can you can get something from it. You don't necessarily have to be uh, seasoned like mm-hmm. me in autumn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. You have to be right. OGs. Um, but if you if you want to hear some good R&B music, you know, where guys, you know, actually talking and talking about his feelings and, you know, expressing himself in, in the right way. Uh, check this album out. You know, mm-hmm. go pick it up. Go buy the vinyl. Go buy the CD if you want. I mean, it, it's uh, it's it's available on all streaming flat platforms. So um, I think I would look at you strange if you listen to it and say you didn't like it. I'll yeah. put it like that because I think most people will like it yeah. who haven't heard it. Yeah. And if you have and if you haven't heard if you heard it and you're familiar with it. Uh, go back and give it a spin anyway. It's a dope album. And and know that it is an album. It is a love album. It's like every single song, because back then, that's what we sang about. Right. It, it wasn't, um, so we're singing about drugs or we're not singing about, I mean, like I, people, yeah, like literally <laughs> singing about like, that's what they're doing now. Like, you know, we're, we're going through a, a, a time where a lot of, I won't say a lot cause I, I don't even listen to most of it, but from what I've, what I've heard, it's a lot of very like down kind of depressing type of joints instead Mm -hmm. of um let's be in love let's fall in love just like um um the clip you played on uh that 
I think that was a uh, Devonte or somebody talking, and he said, you know, yeah, you know, we're singing about love, but you know, nobody's really singing about having a baby and taking care of it. Nope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what, but that's what what they were on back then. It was mm-hmm. about love. It was about family. It was about um, baby, baby, please, I'm sorry. Um, or it was, you know, okay, you broke my heart. So, you know, you go ahead and go on about your way. I mean, but it was all love related. It was mm-hmm. all about love. Like the entire album, an entire R and B album would be about love. And every once in a while they would sprinkle in some dance music, but even the dance music was kind oh, of about no love. Yeah. So, or, or it'll be just about a happy time. It'd be about mm-hmm. happy times, uh, some sort of celebration or something like that. And that is why I say it's very different. So different. We, <laughs> so, you so know, different. it's very, 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 very different. So, but anyways, um, what would I like to say? Aside from that, I would like to say to Al, because again, I know he's listening. Of course. Um. I loved this album. I still love this album. I uh, probably listen to it, you know, a handful of times a month. Still in 2020. Uh, this is, we're in March of 2020. And I still listen to this. I, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I listen to any of the other ones. But I'm going to, after this podcast, like sometime this week, I'm going to give them a spin just so that I can, you know, see what was cracking on there. I don't I'm kind of afraid to, but I'm going to anyway. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to support you, my brother. I'm going to support you. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. So I want to um, thank you, uh, Kyle, for coming on. Can you tell my listeners how they can reach you and where they can follow your podcast? Oh, no doubt. Uh, you can catch me uh, on social media. You can follow me at 12 Kyle, the number one, two K Y L E. Uh, that's on the Twitter. That's on the IG. Uh, you can also catch the podcast. Uh, it's called the 12 Kyle podcast. You can find it on all platforms where, where, uh, podcasts are free. Um, so, and you can catch the podcast on IG at, uh, 12 Kyle podcast, the number one, two K Y L E podcast, uh, spelled out. So check it out. Uh, and like I said, check out the podcast because, uh, I'm, you know, normally dropping some, some dope content yeah. on there. I talk a little bit about everything. I might talk about dating one week, relationships one week, uh, music, a lot of music talk, uh, a little sports. Um, I don't talk about current stuff, but uh, um, I try to keep it fresh and funky. So, you know, it's not a dated podcast. So you can always go back and listen. And um, and once again, I got to thank my girl Autumn for having me on. This has been fun taking it back to 88. Yes. Um, and a great album. So again, thanks again for having me on. And I definitely will have you back on. We'll find another album to talk about. We'll just talk, shoot the shit. It don't matter. Yeah, One way yeah, whatever. Bring me back. I'm ready. Oh, for sure. Also, Maybe. I want to say um, while we're here, congratulations on your 200th episode. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't plan to be around that long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because there's a lot of people who really don't. Like after listening to your 200th, 200th episode, I literally sat in my car and thought to myself, like, wow, 200? Like, am I really, like, do I love this this much to be around for a 200th episode? I think you do. I think I do, too. And the other reason why is because I paid a a good amount of money for this damn equipment. (laughs) So I'm going to need all... I'm going to need all that. I'm going to need as many episodes until this damn thing die. That's I know that's right. That, so that's going to be that on that. I'm going to be on here talking. And I'm going to be just talking about flies on the wall. It's not even going to matter. I'm going to run out of stuff to talk about. And I'm going to be on here reading a book. It's not going to matter because um, <laughs> this, <laughs> this equipment I bought. <laughs> but you know what it is, too? I think people relate to you. So anytime you can have people that will relate to you and understand and appreciate what it is that you're doing, uh, it makes it a lot easier to put out content, especially when, you know, maybe the days that you don't necessarily feel like having content. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things that you've done that is really, really dope is you found other people to bring on so that that having people on kind of gives you a boost of energy. I think some from time to time, it does. Uh, even when you don't want to do it yourself, it's it's uh, just it's the creative process. And I think you listen to a lot of different podcasts. And when you listen to other podcasts, you get ideas 
and you don't get stagnant. So I think that's uh, I would not be surprised for you to see you do 300 episodes, to be honest. Oh, well, thank you. And and I have to give a shout out um, with you mentioning that I have to give a shout out to Black Paco because Black yeah, Paco. yeah Black Paco is really who made me comfortable with having guests on and being on other podcasts. Like mm-hmm. I was not trying to do it at first. I was like, nah, I'm going to just get on here and just talk about whatever. And he hit me up one day like, Hey, I want to be on your podcast. And at first I was like, nah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like, what are we going to talk about? You know what I mean? Like I didn't know. And right. then he, he hit me up again and was like, I'm trying to be on a podcast. And I was like, you know what? All right, we're going to do it. And, and, um, he um I, I actually was on a different podcast before he came on. I was on Shenanigans with Friends. And um she kind of made me comfortable too. But him coming on to my podcast and just kind of being very easy to talk to. Like he's very, mm-hmm. very easy to like we vibe. Uh, y'all already know he's he's on every um last Friday of the month. Like that's how much we vibe. Me and me and Paco vibe. So shout out to Black Paco. Shout out to everybody going to Smoke Free Weekend. Um did you have anything else you wanted to say? Uh, that was it. That was it, man. Appreciate the love. Definitely right. appreciate the love. Well, thank you so much for being on. And I want to thank all my listeners for coming back to listen again. If this was your first time, um, you got lucky because you got a real dope episode. Uh, but until you guys hear me again, peace. Five G's.